This is flip mini lecture number 25. It's on night sections 10, 3, 10, 4, and 10, 5. I spent a lot of time on 10, 2. That's really where the meat of the concepts are at. But 10, 3 is also important. That's on the uh, energy stored in a spring. And then 10, 4 and 10, 5 are basically kind of like fleshing out the same discussions that we've been doing in class, where my analogy has been bank balances. Uh, the energy is conserved, and sort of when you withdraw it from one account, it gets added to another account. And our main accounts here right now are kinetic energy and potential energy. Uh, the one other account we have, of course, is that sometimes when you have frictional forces, uh, energy disappears off into vibration and uh, this destruction or rearrangement of molecules, and Knight is calling that thermal energy. So sometimes you have to account for the dissipation that dissipative forces do. Once you account for all that, energy is conserved. And that just means that there's now more and more examples we're going to do of that. So here's one more example. The energy stored in springs. Now to do this example, you have to go back to flip mini lecture number 22, which covered section 9.4 of night and got uh, the equation that corresponds to equation 9.25 in night. And the equation that I got for you in flip section mini lecture number 22 looked like that. Now, I made my life a little bit easier. I chose my coordinate x so that x equals 0 corresponded to the natural rest length of the spring. So if the spring's at rest and it's neither being compressed nor extended, it's, it's at its natural length, I chose my coordinate system so that the coordinate system happened to line up with that natural length. If I hadn't done that, then let's say that I chose sort of sillily, I chose my coordinate system here. That's my x equals zero line. This is my y equals zero line. Uh, and now you go over here and you find out how what this spring is doing when this spring is neither compressed nor extended. And you call this distance here, you call that x equilibrium. Then this formula would have changed. It would have been that the work done by a spring is equal to minus a half k, and then it would be x final minus x equilibrium squared plus one half k x initial minus x equilibrium squared. And you can see, of course, if I smartly choose x equilibrium to be zero, I get right back to that equation. And uh, sometimes Wright, Knight writes this as a delta s, um, and this would be delta s final, where delta s final means the difference between x final and x equilibrium. And of course, this then would be uh, delta S initial, where delta S initial was the initial difference between X initial and X equilibrium. Okay, so we've got that formula. And now we've got our formula that says that this thing that we're going to call the potential energy in a, some, that's available in something, and this would be the change in the potential energy, is equal to minus the change in the work. Well, okay, we know what the work done by the spring on a block is, it's this. So we multiply through by minus one, and now we have uh, one half k delta s final squared, and now the, that minus sign canceled, that minus sign, this minus sign comes here, and I have minus one half k delta s initial squared. Okay. So now there's an obvious identification once again. If I say that the potential energy in a spring is equal to one half k delta s squared, that then that works for this. Uh, I plug in u final is uh, has is this formula with delta s replaced by delta s final, and u initial is this formula with delta s replaced by, placed by delta s initial, and if I choose that as my u, then delta u is this, and the work done by the spring is that. So this is great. You've got it. That's 
the energy stored in a spring. Of course, this is uh, arbitrary up to a constant. If someone wanted to say, oh yeah, well I like to add uh, 48 joules to these. So I, I like this formula except I add 48 joules. Well, they're welcome to. The only thing that matters is changes in potential energy and nobody can really say what the potential energy itself is when the only thing that really matters is the change in the potential energy. So if somebody else wants to do this, they're welcome to. The nice thing about not doing that is that if the spring is at uh, delta S equals zero, that is to say if X is at X equilibrium, then this formula kind of has a nice simple case. In that case, U is zero. All right, that's 10.3, really, pretty easy. Now let's go on to 10.4 and 10.5. Those will be even easier because 10.4 was this discussion of conservation of energy and I've already done plenty of that in class. And 10.5 is this business of energy diagrams where you just draw these bar charts that show how the energy is flowing back and forth between kinetic and potential energy. Well, we've already done that. So actually, you are totally ready for Wednesday's class, and uh, the next flipped lecture for Monday's class, after you return from mid-break, mid-term break, will be on 10.6.